In this segment, we're going to talk about barefoot trimming. Our barefoot trimming certification is actually probably one of the most difficult certifications to be successful on. There's multiple aspects when it comes to barefoot trimming, but I think two of the most important things that we need to pay attention to is one, protection, and two, balance. And it seems to be that, that oftentimes we'll try to compromise one for the other, and, and I think we can find somewhat of a middle ground. If a horse is barefoot out in the wild on their own, they get to choose the terrain that they live on, where they go, and the paths they take. But the moment we pull a horse's shoes off or we, or we leave them barefoot to begin with and we get on top of them and we go for a ride, we now are in charge of dictating where they go and where they don't go. So we are the ones that are responsible. Is this horse suitable to be barefoot and do the job we're asking it? If you're gonna take it on a rocky terrain and, and the horse doesn't have much sole depth, it's not feasible. So it's our job as hoof care practitioners to pay attention to where the horse lives now, what the environment they're gonna work in, and then what the confirmation of the foot is right now or, or the protection of the foot. Uh, what we've come to with the ELPO is found that it is when leaving a horse barefoot, it is important to not compromise the uh, protection to achieve what someone might call a perfect balance. But I will show you in this segment that we're gonna be able to get fairly close. Our barefoot trim certification is done by assessing the distortions like we did in our live sole hoof mapping, and then just trimming away the greatest distortion first. Okay, we're gonna go through a few feet in this. I've got, I believe I've got a, a foot that's just had a shoe pulled off. I've got a foot that is a negative plane. We're gonna go over an upright foot or a slightly club foot and uh, a normal foot. So we're gonna try to give you some things to look at and show you how assessing the distortions allows you to know what to trim. It gives you that map, All right? Great, we're gonna get started. The first foot that we're gonna look at is a foot that we have just recently pulled the shoe off. I don't know if you guys can see this. Here are the nail holes, okay? And we're gonna use this horse as an example of a horse that uh, a client comes up and says, hey, I wanna pull my horse's shoes and let him go barefoot for the winter. First things that we're gonna do is, again, we're gonna assess all of the distortions because it's gonna tell us what we can or cannot take or what we should or should not take. First thing we're gonna do is find our dimple in the back part. Back part of the foot. We're gonna look at our central sulcus length. We're gonna assess the length of the frog. The length of a frog is a zero. So this frog is not stretched at all, okay? The width of the frog is a zero. So there's a quarter of an inch or more. The health of the central sulcus is a zero. It's rounded and has a bottom to it, okay? The next thing that we assess is our heel position. This heel and this heel as the last weight bearing surface. If our dimple is right here, that is directly lined up with our dimple on both sides. Both of our heels are a zero. If we look at our bar, this bar has a little bit more curvature to it. This bar has some curvature to it, but not the same. When we look at this and we assess it, this bar is at a one. It's got a slight amount of curvature to it. This bar is also at a one. This one's a one, maybe a two. It's probably in between the two. But the only thing that we really need to assess there is that this one has a bit more curvature to it than this one does, okay? Still, we're a one to a one to a two on this side. So we've assessed our heels, our bars. The next thing we're gonna do is assess our toe length because we've got, we know that this tissue and that the frog is not stretched, 
that is a good measurement, an accurate measurement, to be able to get the widest part of the foot. We are going to measure what our toe length is from our dimple forward. Our toe is a zero. It's so just a quarter of an inch ahead of that. So the frog length is a zero. The frog width is a zero. The central sulcus health is a zero. The heels are both zeros. And the toe length is a zero. The bars are the only thing that has some distortion here. This bar is a one. This bar is a two. Now, it's really important that when we look at this and we've assessed this, this is how this thing works. If you have zero heels, you have a zero toe, then your um, anterior posterior balance is in balance. If you have, z um, the, your bars are the only thing that says, hey, we're a little bit out, okay? The issue with this particular foot is, again, we said that we're just pulling the shoes off and we're going to let it go barefoot for the winter. We need to assess the depth of our frog. When you take a look at the apex of our frog, if I was to take this and set a straight edge across there, there is less than a quarter of an inch of depth from the apex of the frog to the edge or outer edge of the wall height. There is a little bit more depth in the commissures, but not a lot. This one has just a little bit more. My point about this is you've got this, we've assessed our distortions, all we're gonna trim is the overgrown distortion. Which means for this particular foot, I might straighten this bar in the back half a little. And I'm gonna show you that as soon as I did that, the curvature of your bar has improved. Here's the curvature, remember, of this bar. They are more similar right away. If I take and I assess that again, we are now just barely at a one, and this one is just barely at a one. I would choose, if I was taking my exam, to say I'm not gonna trim anything out of this. This horse here doesn't need anything done to it. If I just pull the shoe off and there is no depth at the apex of our frog, we know that this horse is going to be sensitive all in this area if we trim any of it out. Now, in your everyday work, this would be a foot that you would either A, need to explain to the client that maybe you need to leave a shoe on a little longer and maybe it's not a candidate for barefoot but in a testing situation, if you have a foot that we've pulled a shoe off and you have to test on it, you need to go through the process of assessing your distortions and seeing if you're able to just improve that one thing. You're done. You might want to roll this sharp edge. You may not. When you look at the front of this foot and the top of this foot, and we take a look at the distortions or the flare, it's a very minimal amount. There's almost none, almost no distortion to this foot at all, okay? So it's very important that if you get a foot like this and you're in your exam, that you go through the process you map it out or you assess your distortions. We can still map this foot fairly easily. Again, we've got the widest part of the foot from where the apex of the frog is, is one inch back. You can see where your bars come in. It may be a little bit harder. You're not gonna take, this may be a case where you don't touch the sole. Okay, and you're gonna take the two out of three and go, here is the widest part of my foot. From there, I'm gonna go and measure 
an inch and three quarters to the tip of the bone, which is right here. A quarter of an inch ahead of that. And to be honest with you, I'm not sure I would roll that at all. When you take and you measure this thing, you are already at a 50-50 and that's a quarter of an inch past that. You're at a zero position. We've already established that. So you still need to go through the process, pick up the foot, assess it, frog length, frog width, central sulcus, heel length, bar position, toe length. What we're going to take away is only the overgrowth. Zero, 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 two, one. We just evened them out. And that's it. Second foot we're gonna assess is a foot that comes in that seems like it's probably pretty good. When you look at it from a lateral position, the toe doesn't look like it's excessively long, nor do the heels look like they're excessively long. But what we can say is that this particular foot does seem to have some flaring, okay? So we're gonna pick it up, we're gonna turn it over, we're gonna look at the underneath side, we're gonna go through the same process as if I was in an exam. Okay, it's really interesting that we can see from the <clears throat> top view that there's some flare. If we just start to pick this out a little bit, this particular foot is gonna tell you quite a lot. One, this foot, the sole and the wall are bearing weight. Even. <clears throat> the first thing we're supposed to do after picking it out and wire brushing it is finding the dimple in the back part of the foot because that is going to help us assess a lot of our distortions. Now, as soon as I did that, you can see that we have a central sulcus. This is one of those central sulcuses in the back that is a bit diseased. So to be able to find the dimple or the V, if I was to draw this in and we said it was back here, that would be incorrect. That's up in the heel bulbs. So what are the other ways to assess that? Where the heel and the frog come together on both sides or the little dimple or indention. I can find it on this side. It's a little bit harder to find it on this side, but it's right here. So the dimple is not back here. It is right here, okay? So first thing we do is find our dimple in the back part of the foot. This is a good foot to explain that on, especially when you have a diseased frog. I'm gonna try to find the apex of my central sulcus, and oftentimes I can run my, my tool my divider's up and see where that starts to come up. There are some loose tags here that I'm gonna kinda just trim, trim away so that maybe we can get a better picture of that. There isn't a whole lot, so you wanna be, be somewhat conservative of what you're trimming off of the frog here, because I would assume that this guy is going to need or use quite a bit of it. So I will take my dividers or a pick or something and try to run it up and feel where it starts to come. It comes back up. So you're, if you're running it like, like so, here's the dimple part. You'll feel it go deep and then you'll feel it start to come back up. And what I'm looking for at the apex of that central sulcus is as that starts to come back up right there. When I do that on this one, we hit this spot right here. Sometimes it's helpful for me to draw my central sulcus in. Okay. Now, we found the dimple, found the length of our central sulcus. We're gonna find the length 
or assess the length of our frog, if I take that and double it, that drops right there for the apex of my frog. The apex of my frog on this one might be slightly stretched, okay? Because this is the true apex, that's where the tissue actually meets up at the moment. My frog length is going to be one, it's a little bit stretched. When I look at the length of the central sulcus compared to the width of the frog, that would be a one. It is the same size. So this frog is actually a bit diseased and a bit atrophied. When I look at the health of my central sulcus, it's narrow and it is deep, but it does have a bottom to it. So this, the health of my central sulcus is going to be a three. Next thing that I'm gonna assess are my heels. And I look at the last weight bearing spot of my heel on this side and my last weight bearing spot of my heel on this side. When I look at that and see where I am in relationship to my dimple, I'm actually at a zero position within a quarter of an inch. Okay, you guys see that? I'm a zero position. So my heels are zero. My bars are a little difficult to see. I'm gonna to try to draw them in here. Okay. I would say that this bar has more curvature, this one is straighter. It's, it's very easy to see. When I lay my dividers on, remember, you're at a half of an inch, okay? Another quarter is a one. This has got another quarter of an inch to it. So this bar is a two. This bar is a one, maybe a two. It's a one to two. But you can obviously see the amount of curvature in this bar versus the amount of curvature in this bar. If I take and measure an inch back from my apex of my frog and make a mark. You can see that that ends or terminates right about where my bar is there and ends and terminates right about where my bar is there. Now I have two ways to find that widest part of the foot. I'm going to go ahead and set that on there. Give my mark for my widest part of my foot. I've assessed my frog, my heels, my bars. Now I'm gonna assess my toe length. If I go from the central sulcus to the widest part of the foot and I double that, there I am, it's my 50-50. The quarter of an inch is my zero, so I'm a one. Frog length is a one. Frog width is a one. Central sulcus is a three. My medial bar is a one. My lateral bar is a two. My toe length is a one. So when you look at this foot, you can see that there is not a whole lot to do to it. But the difference between this foot and the last foot is the amount of depth at the apex of my frog is almost an inch, okay? And we can see that the sole is bearing weight along with the wall. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim this. My heels are at a zero position. This particular bar has a little more curvature to it. As soon as I start to trim that, clean it up. I also have some chalky material and because I have an, an inch depth to the sole here, I know that I have some sole that can come out. It also correlates with what's chalky.
Now, just by trimming that side, I have now straightened out my bar quite significantly and brought it in. As I make my way around the foot, it actually has a spot where it's all chalky and, and is wanting to peel up and I'm not necessarily cutting it. I'm just lifting. Now remember, we talked about the sole growing evenly from the bone. You can make this a level plane from one side to the other. So essentially all I'm doing is connecting the dots. from one side to the other. You can still see there is quite a bit of sole depth, half of an inch. But the plane of this sole is the same from one side to the other. And I started by straightening out the greatest distortion, which was this bar, okay? That gave me the plane to connect the dots from this side all the way around to this side. Now when we look at our bar assessment on this one, we have brought the bar in on this side, we have brought the bar in on this side. We now can see that there's a little bit of heel height here and that our heels, even though they were in a zero position, which was, they're a quarter of an inch ahead of the dimple, okay? This bar curvature told us that there's probably a little bit of room to get that to a zero position. I'm gonna address my heels. You can see it's not gonna take very much. As soon as I get my rasp and hit it, I get back to a zero position fairly quickly. I didn't lower it, I don't know how many how many rasp strokes that is, but you can see it's not very many, okay? With the fine side of my rasp, my heels are now at a zero position still. They're not beyond it, okay? But I've in improved the height from the sole plane to the wall and the sole plane to the wall on both sides. Now, we've improved our bars. We've improved our heels. We are not going to improve the central sulcus quality with trimming it today. Now, with getting the foot back in balance, it will help the frog be better. It will help the frog not get stretched, but it is not something that you change right now. It is also not gonna make the frog wider today. But, with Exfoliating that and just trimming the distortions, straightening out this bar, getting our heels at a zero position, and using that bar straightness to help me connect the dots from one side to the other, we have a better view now of the sole wall junction. You guys see that? Again, once we assess that, you can see that the sole, once we've drawn the sole wall junction on either side, is more symmetrical. The wall is what's flared. Now, I'm gonna take this foot and flip it over, and we're gonna address the wall before I address the toe length. When we address the wall, we are looking at, ideally, to go from the hairline straight down. You can see that this starts to flare here on this side. This one, if I was to put a rasp on it, I don't know, can you see that? If I was to put a rasp on it and you looked at the air behind it, you would see that it's straight to about this point here and then it starts to dish. So the flare on this one actually starts all the way up here. I put this one on, it's straight down to about here, and then it starts slowly dishing out. So it's about being able to assess where the flare is. Now, 
how you dress the flare is extremely important. If you take your rasp and you are going at it like this, your rasp, you can see, will hit the cornet band and you will miss what you're trying to do. The greatest distortion happens furthest from its origin. So if the wall originates from up here and grows down, that means the greatest distortion is going to be down here. You want to take your rasp in a position where you can get that off quickly. You can see in just a few rasp strokes how that flare has improved at the bottom. There was no distortion up here, it was down there. Now you welcome to go ahead and blend that in to make it look nicer and clean it up, but you're not going to be doing very much to it. We have completely changed the flare and the look on that side of the foot. When we switch to the other side, we're going to be doing a very similar thing. The greatest distortion is furthest away. Even though it starts up here, we're going to make sure we're taking it from just the bottom of the foot. Now when you look at that foot, the symmetry of that has improved quite a lot. The wall is fairly straight from top to bottom. The wall is fairly straight from top to bottom. And the foot is fairly uniform. It's just about knowing what to take and how far to go. If you're over here trying to follow the flare and scoop it, you will cut it at the coronet band or you will have a bunch of gashes up top. And what ends up happening is you thin the wall up higher and allows the wall to flare or flex even more the next time. We want to address the flare at the bottom where the distortion is the greatest. Now you can see if I, I've addressed the flare from the bottom and we've brought in this distance in. We're much closer to the same on both sides. What we're looking for is uniform wall thickness. There is a little bit of height still left there on the wall. I did not over trim the wall. At this point, I am going to map out this foot the rest of the way. I have a fairly clear view of my widest part of the foot. I'll take a straight edge. Line it up. Take those three. My widest part of the foot. Again, I've already drawn in my bars. I've measured back an inch back from my apex. The last thing to do was to find the widest part of the, or the sole, okay? From here, I will measure forward an inch and three quarters. From here, I will measure forward an inch and three quarters to the tip of P3. A quarter of an inch beyond that to where we would have our roll or break over in the foot. Now, I am going to show you that because there is still at the apex of my frog a half of an inch of depth, hopefully you can see that, that I feel comfortable with rolling this toe
there. If I set my rasp on here, I'm actually still above the sole. I don't know if you can see that from that angle. Okay. But my break over is rasped in. Right there. If we take and we go from the back part of the foot to the widest part of the foot and go forward, we've achieved more than 50-50. And our ratios for our heels, where our heels end, has achieved a 50-50. Don't forget to draw in your pillars. I want you guys to notice that the wall thickness from here to here has improved and is very similar to the wall thickness from there to there. We are looking for uniform wall thickness. We are looking for that the heels are ending in a similar position and that the curvature is similar. Symmetry is a big part of what you're trimming off. Now I can still see chalk over here and I can still see chalk over there and I can probably get and knife more of that out, but it is not the most beneficial thing for a horse that's barefooted. When you take a look at this, you can see that the breakover is right here. That's where the rocker and roll is in the toe. But I still have quite a bit of depth over my sole. And I did not compromise the thickness of my sole. But I still achieved a 50-50 ratio from heels to where the breakover is. And I've improved the medial lateral balance and the flaring, I've brought this foot all back in underneath itself. The next foot that we're gonna take a look, or the next foot type that we're gonna take a look at would be more of an upright or a club foot. This particular one doesn't have a severe dish in the toe. It looks like it's already started to manage it, but it's definitely got an excessive amount of heel length to it. And you can see that there's probably, uh, as I go forward with the limb, there's a little bit of a breakover already worn into it. So it actually looks like the breakover in this foot is not out here, it's back here. So we've got a very small area here. When we look at it from this direction, you'll see a little bit of flaring here and a little bit of flaring here. But for the most part, it's a fairly tidy foot. It's just upright. All right, once we've assessed the outside of the foot, again, you can see how cor the correlation of that, of the flaring, there's a little bit of flaring here, a little bit of flaring here. Again, you can, hopefully you can see this quite well. This foot is, has either been rasped or worn to this position. So when we look at this thing, we're gonna assess it the exact same way. I'm gonna clean up some of this stuff so I can see if I can find a central sulcus. Do you see how diseased this frog is? Okay, we've got tags of it coming off. I could probably just pull those off. I didn't cut it. Pull that one off. Just trying to clean up any of these loose little tags here so I can get a, an assessment. First thing we have to do is what? Find our central sulcus. This is one of those interesting feet, again, where the central sulcus, it's not only closed up now, but it's deep. It's a little sensitive too. 
So it is about an inch deep. So that's one of those things that we're gonna really pay attention to. Finding the dimple, because it's deep, this central sulcus actually goes all the way up into the hairline. If you guys can see that, all the way up into the hairline here, okay? So we've got this distance here that it is. Trying to find the dimple on this one is difficult. But if we take where the frog and the heel come together, because there is no flattened area for this, that would be our dimple. You can see how I've lined that up. It is not back here. It is not here. It is right here. Now if we take <coughs> and try to find where our central sulcus comes up, you can see that this is trashed, diseased, they've got flaps laying over, but the central sulcus is coming up to about right here. So it goes down and then starts to come up and it ends about right there. If I take my dividers, look at that, and double it, it is exactly where the tissue ends on the frog. So we found our dimple, we found our central sulcus length. We're gonna assess the frog length, that's a zero. The frog width is a one. The central sulcus health is closed, it's diseased, and it's deep and sensitive. It's a four or a five, okay? I'm gonna mark where the, my last weight bearing spot is of my heels. This is a very interesting horse because oftentimes a club-footed horse will not go that far forward or the heels don't necessarily grow forward. This one actually has. If we look at the length of our central sulcus, we throw an edge over this to see where that is. We are about 50%, maybe just over. So this would be a three. This heel is a three, this heel is a three. That means they've, and you can see the distance that they've grown here. Okay. We look at our bars. Our bars are going to correlate with that. When we stick that over, one, two, three, one, that's one. Two, two and a three, and these heels are threes. Take measure back one inch from the true apex of the frog to give us our widest part of our foot, which is here. These bars are so overgrown and laid over that they appear to end way up here, but if you look down in here in the commissure, you can see where the swell starts to end here, comes down, comes up, and then it changes direction, becomes very straight. So there's curvature, and then it becomes straight. This one you can see ends here. There's our two bars where they line up. So that's the widest part of the foot. We've assessed our heels, we've assessed our frog, we've assessed our bars. What's left? Our toe length. So if we go from the widest part of the foot to the dimple, we are well over or we are at a zero position way up here. And even where the breakover is, it's definitely behind that, okay? So what do we do? We're gonna trim the greatest distortions first. The greatest distortions are the heels and the bars. And we know we're not gonna improve the central sulcus and we know we're not gonna improve the width. So I am gonna take my nippers and just check my bars and see <clears throat> how much of that wants to pop loose, if there's any chalkiness. I'm not trying to cut it. I'm just trying to grab it and peel it. And you can see this tissue under here is definitely chalky. I'm gonna grab this one on this side, 
try to pop that little loose. And I hope you guys can see that I have started from the widest part of the foot back. There is minimal distortion, if any, up here on the front half of the foot. I'm going to take Clean that up. It's actually still chalky here. On this side is similar issue. I'm just removing the chalky material. Now, immediately I have improved the curvature of my bar. Hopefully you guys can see that. It was way out here. So that brought it in immediately. The second thing that did, you remember before on the other foot, that once I got my bars cleaned up and in a similar position, I'm connecting the dots. This plane goes from one side to the other very smoothly which leaves me with my wall height. Now you can see that these, the heels have actually, the bars bent and pushed the heels outward here, but the landing of them came inward. As soon as I trim these, the heels are actually gonna go back out again, okay? So it pushed it out, but the weight bearing part of this heel came inward. I'm gonna trim one side first. I have now improved my position to a zero position and I'm still above my sole. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I have improved my position, but I am still above my sole. The front half of the foot, remember, is no distortion. So now I'm gonna use my rasp and get the back half finished. Clean up this bar just a little. Straighten that out. That one's good. Draw my bars back in. My heel ends here, right at the zero position on this one. I'm still a little bit high on this one. Do you see that? So I'm gonna take that. It doesn't take very many raft strokes, guys, to get that at a zero position. Here are my bars. I have improved my bars from a three to a one on that side. From a three to a one on that side. So we're balanced inside to outside. Both my bars are ones. My heels are both at a zero position. And we know that my toe length is already at a zero position. There is a little depth here, but because of where the breakover is and, and the angle of it, I'll show you when I flip it the other direction, I'm not even gonna address this part of the foot. I am, however, going to take, and from this direction, address some of the uniform wall thickness. <clears throat> so if this is the edge of the sole, here. And this is the edge of the sole here. You can see how much more symmetrical that foot is from inside to outside, how the wall is more uniformed from inside to outside, okay? And how we've already got a breakover rasp in here. Zeros, ones, 
definitely a zero. We trim this foot by assessing the distortion and trimming away the greatest distortion. When you are done, you should map it out. We know that our bars terminate here on either side. We know that we've got one inch back from the apex of the frog, which lines up with our bars. Our walls are fairly straight, but we should still try to see if we can find the widest part of the sole, which there's a line here and a line here, which puts it right about there. Club feet are generally very straight, so you look at where that line is, where that line is, and try to bisect it. When we lay that down, we have our widest part of the foot. When we measure on this foot an inch and three quarters, they've actually got the breakover before we've done anything rasped at, at what we would say is the tip of the bone. I do want to note that I have left a lot of depth here. There's a lot of sole depth. I have not gotten into this for a reason. In a club-footed horse, the tip of the bone is generally tipped more down, which means there's more tension on the deep flexor, okay? So if you address the back half of the foot, it's very important that the leverage is reduced on the front half. This particular horse has lots of thickness and depth. To leave that breakover in where it is, I do not want to mess with the front part of this foot. When we look at where the heels end, to the widest part of the foot and double that, it is more than 50-50. I've gone a I've gone all over this already. There's just a bit of flaring here and a bit here. Although it starts up higher here, we want to be very aware that we don't start thinning it too much up here because all we'll do is continue to exacerbate that. So I'm going to start Ooh. where the greatest distortion is. Down at the bottom of the foot. Just by changing that on that side, it brings that distortion in and helps the foot be more symmetrical. Again, you can clean it up and just knock the dust off of it to help it be a little bit more appealing. We do have to remember that some of what we do is aesthetics for the client. We'll do the same thing on the opposite side. Now, you can see there's still a little bit of addition there. There's a little bit of addition there, but I would not advise to go much further. We just remember, we want to get uniform wall thickness, and I believe that a lot of this will start to grow out and change if you consistently assess the distortions. When we look at this foot, you can again see that this is where the breakover was before we started. I can flip that up. Hopefully you can see that, okay? So there was nothing for me to do on the front part of this foot. I didn't even hit it from this side with the rasp at all. But I have, again, improved my ratios from where the heel ends to the widest part of the foot to more than 50-50, okay? And we've improved the bars and we've improved the heel position. Once we do this, we're gonna allow this frog to get more contact with the ground and hopefully start to begin to heal and not have the same type of atrophy. The next foot that we're going to take a look at would be uh, a negative plane hind foot. If you take a look at this, you can see how short the toe is, but it's also starting to get a bit of a bull nose to it. One of the other characteristics of a negative plane hind foot is that there's, because the bone starts to rotate in an upward position, there's more pressure in the heels and the back part, and oftentimes you will see large flaring on either one side or both sides of a negative plane foot. 
So this guy, I would assume, probably has a medial lateral balance as well as just being negative plane. So after assessing the outside and the top, we can start to see some things really, some very prominent things of a negative plane hind foot. One of the very first things that I will show you is that the width of the frog oftentimes is quite large and great. And so this section of the frog is trying to do more work. It's trying to help support the back half. Because again, if the bone is, is rotating in an upward position and now there's more pressure on the heels, the frog has a tendency to try to take over and help support the back part of the foot. We're gonna go through the same process. Try to find a dimple in the back part of the foot. I'm gonna clean away, you can see there's some of these tags, okay? I'm gonna peel some of this stuff off, trim some of that up before I get my dimple because I would like to be as clear as possible. I'll take my nippers. You can see here, I'm just peeling that off. I did not cut it. I'm grabbing this tag as well, peeling it off. I did not cut it. I'm gonna grab this tag as well, I'm peeling it off. I did not cut it. Immediately upon cleaning up those loose tags of the frog, you can see the frog much better. We have a much clearer picture of the central sulcus. This central sulcus might be one of the most clear that we've had. I, I really, this is one that would be ideal in looking at to us help assess, okay? The frog's a little bit pushed over. Some of this is overgrown. But if you look at where the dimple is and where the frog and the heel come together, here and here, there is a little bit of an indention here, a little bit of an indention here. This is the back part of our frog. This is our dimple right here. We take and measure the length of our central sulcus and double it. Look at that. The frog apex is not really stretched. So, found our dimple, found our central sulcus length, double it, frog apex. The length is a zero. The width is obviously a zero. If we assess where our heels are, I'm gonna show you that I can take my rasp and set it on here and just lightly scrape across here to see where the last weight bearing part of that heel is and scrape across here. Just to help you if you, you have a hard time seeing it, that is rasped here, this one is here. Hopefully you guys can see the disparity between this and this. Very long, not as long. And there's a difference between length and height. So, according to our central sulcus, this one, I, if you remember, I said there's a medial lateral balance as well. This heel ends ahead of the 50-50. It's probably, this heel is a four, okay? This heel is a one. Look at the disparity between those. Remember how much it flares on this side. When we take and we mark out our bars, you can see that this bar is a one, two, three, four. Four on this side. This bar, although it has a lot of curvature to it, is actually a one, a two. Four, two. 
So the distortion back here is quite great. If we measure from the apex back one inch, which is about where our bars terminate, we can find the widest part of the foot. If we measure, again, from the central sulcus to the widest part of the foot, forward, we are at a zero position and then some. So this is one of those feet that's really important to pay attention to. Hopefully you can see that there's a, a great depth here. There's a lot of a cup in this foot. But the toe length is extremely short. Oftentimes individuals want to take this thing and grab this and start cutting this down because it looks like there's a lot of depth. If the toe is extremely short, okay, if it is extremely short but has a great cup to it, you want to be aware that that's probably a negative plane horse and that you do not want to trim a lot of this material here. The other thing is, is that this is quite waxy. So kind of like the club foot that we just did, the toe length was short, but even though the heels aren't tall, they're long. So we're gonna go through and trim the greatest distortions first. I'm gonna clean up the side of this frog just a little bit. As you can see, immediately just by taking that lip off, the frog becomes more symmetrical as well. The frog length is a zero, the frog width is a zero, the central sulcus is a zero. Greatest distortion is on this side. Remember the heel is ended way up here. This heel is ended here. This one has ended back here. I'm gonna take and just pop this bar first. But I'm not gonna trim the wall with my nippers. I'm not gonna nipper my wall. I'm gonna trim this bar here. You can see this loose tag of the sole. I'm just gonna stick my nippers in there, pop that loose. I'm not cutting it, I'm just popping loose what's ready to pop out. I've straightened my bars out. You're immediately going to see that we have now changed the bar position to a zero. Okay. Once I straighten my bars, it gives me a plane to go all the way across here. Okay. Now what I'm going to show you is that I'm going to change this heel position with my rasp not my nippers. And the reason being is because remember, there's not a lot of height, it's just length. Not height, length. Oftentimes we get in trouble when we grab a hold of this thing, grab our nippers and start cutting it. Watch what happens as I take a few rasp strokes to the heel. The heel is now, that was here, has already moved back here. I did not take very many rasp strokes and I'm almost there. I'm gonna hit this side because it's a little bit in my way. With my rasp and a few strokes, I improved my heel position to here and to here, which is at a zero position with my rasp. Now, again, we've got an inch back where the bars terminate. <coughs> it's a little difficult to see the widest part of the sole. 
even though I know that that's there, oftentimes because of flaring and so on, the widest part of the sole seems like on hind feet it can migrate. I am gonna use these two, one inch back and where the bars terminate. I'm gonna line those up. Widest part of the foot. Tip of the bone, an inch and three quarters, two inches to where you would say the breakover would be. My pillars. <laughs> This particular foot, negative plane, heels are at a zero position. Bars are at a zero position. The toe length was already zero and the frog was already zero. But you can see by just improving or trimming where the distortion is, you're going to be able to get your foot balance on more than 50-50 on both of those. If you were in a testing situation, there's nothing wrong with going back and going, this bar still has a little bit of a kink to it. I'm gonna clean that up just a little bit. Changes it. You can see now that we're 50-50, our mat, mat meets, or reaches it. We were able to achieve the same things by just evaluating the distortions and by just trimming what was overgrown. As we assess this, you can see there's minimal to no distortion on this side. You should still probably clean it up just a little bit. Knock the dust off of it. Be aware that you don't roll this thing. If I was to take it this way, you would see that there's a, a big roll in it, bull nosed. but I will address the inside at the bottom. You may not get all of this flare in one go. You may want to leave a little bit of it and explain why you've left it, but it's all right to do that. But you can see that that has been improved. Uh, our last foot is going to be one that actually has quite a bit of overgrowth, depth to it, a pretty good toe flare. When you, when you spin it around, or when you look at it this way first, the, the heel height is quite excessive. We have probably almost three inches of, of heel length to it. We have a big dish in the toe that starts here. When we turn it this direction and you look at it straight on, you can see how this foot is breaking over the lateral side and the medial toe has a pretty big flare to it. If we were to look at it from this direction, you would just more see the amount of heel height. So again, we're going to assess the distortions and figure out if we can get this thing to function a little bit better. From the underside, once we take a look at the bottom of the foot, we can again see this quite significant toe flare. We see how, I mean, that is an amazing amount of heel. It's a beauty. So 
the first thing we need to do on this particular foot, when you have this much overgrowth, is that we need to get rid of these loose tags and actually clean up the frog so that we can find the central sulcus. I'm gonna take my nippers and just grab this loose tag. And if you see, I'm just peeling it off of there. I'm trying not to cut it because I'd like it to separate wherever it's ready to let loose. That's a very good indicator of how that would happen. You can see that frog gets cleaned up quite quickly. I'm gonna take my knife. I can actually probably see the apex of the frog from here. It's right about there. Here's my dimple, but this is kind of flapped over here. I just wanna take and see how much of that opens up. It does not take very much. I'm gonna clean this tag off of this frog. I'm gonna clean this tag off of her, that corner. Clean this up just a little bit. That frog changed very quickly. I have to tell you that if you're ever in trouble, please figure out where the frog is, clean up the loose tags, because your frog is gonna give you so much information right off the bat. All right, now we can clearly see where our central sulcus apex is. We can see the V, our dimple, the back part of the foot. Which correlates with that. I'm gonna see if this separates on this side a little bit. So I'm taking my pick and just grabbing it and seeing if it pops loose there. And it does, actually. Where the heel and the frog come together is right there. We have our dimple in the back part of the foot. We're gonna take our central sulcus, double it. Right there is the apex of the frog. Again, we'll take our central sulcus, double it. Right there is the apex of the frog. Frog length is a zero. Frog width. It's, it's a zero, just barely, but it is a zero. It's a little bit wider than it is the length of the central sulcus. The frog apex, or the central sulcus is also a zero. Once I've cleaned all that other stuff out, it's got a bottom to it, it's nice and round, very solid. When we look at where the heel position is, here and here, hopefully you can see quite clearly we have a slight imbalance. This heel is more forward and a bit longer. This one has got more curvature to it. Okay. Our heel position though, if we come down and look at it, on both of these is a four. So this is a four heel and this is a four heel. We're gonna look at our bars. This bar is here. This bar is here. By laying our dividers down the side here, take that, that's a one, it's a two, it's a three on this side, two to a three on this side. Let's just try it again, one, it's a two on this side. and it's a two on this side. Just this one has grown up and pushed over. This one, the heel has got more curvature to it and pushed the bar out this direction. We're gonna measure back an inch from the apex of the frog. Which is gonna set me about here. It's a little hard to see where those bar swells are. 
I can see a change of direction as it comes down and then it bends up and goes straight right about here. It's a little hard on this side, but you can see a very similar thing in the commissure where it's about there. I'm going to take and check my toe length from the central sulcus to the widest part of the foot. Forward. We are at a three. Again, for the exact measurements, make sure you refer back to the hoof distortions protocol. So, the toe length is long. The heel length is excessively long. The bars are extremely distorted, but the frog seems to be fairly good. This is one of those feet that you would look at that is excessively overgrown. Now we're going to take this back. If this horse has been walking around with this much foot, we're going to trim a lot of this off, off of here. And we're probably going to use more of the uh, sole plane to actually get the balance of this foot back. This might be a horse where you have to let the client know that, you know, he might be a little bit tender for a couple days because we're going to change quite excessively how much foot we're taking off here. It's something that's absolutely necessary. There is too much foot and, and will end up causing pressure necrosis, abscessing, and it puts a lot of strain on the tendons and ligaments around the coffin joint. So this would be one of those cases that's extremely overgrown that we need to use the live sole and getting rid of some of these big distortions to get the actual length of the foot from being here to here. My bars tell me a lot about the plane of my foot. So I'm going to grab this and see how much of this wants to peel off. I'm trying not to necessarily cut it. I'm just trying to peel it off. Hopefully you can see the amount of chalky material that's in here that's wanting to fall out. If I can grab that and peel that off. I've already improved this bar quite significantly. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm grabbing it. I'm just trying to peel it off there. Hopefully you guys can see how that all separates. There's so much mass and so much tissue there that it can actually create a pressure necrosis and start to abscess. It can affect the foot and the limb <coughs> and have an adverse effect from having too much in there. This is where I generally take my nippers and I'm rolling them to try to get whatever's chalky out. Again, I'm not cutting. Hopefully you can see I've just peeled that off of there. I'm doing the same thing here. I'm peeling it. I am not cutting it. The, the sole, because it grows evenly from the bone, comes in layers and it will separate very evenly, most of the time, you see that whole layer just comes and separates. Very evenly. All the way back around. Now, I've done this each and every time and gotten rid of and straightened out my bars, which helps me with the plane from one side to the other. I did not cut them. I grabbed and peeled, grabbed and peeled. Now that I've started that process, I'm going to go ahead and start to exfoliate and just smooth this out with my knife. There's still a lot of chalk in this heel. And to be honest with you, we know that these things are excessively long and it's going to be easier for me to get a better balance and a plane of this foot by trimming some of these out of here. So because we've already assessed the, the bars, the heels, the frog, and the toe, I'm going to go ahead and take half of this out of here. You can see now, it's a little bit clearer, how much chalkiness is still in here. There's quite a bit of chalkiness still in this section. I'm going to take a little bit of this on this side. Whew. 
immediately we start to have a foot that's more symmetrical and the heels are in a better position. But it's easier for me to read this foot if we get some of that excess height out. We already know they're excessively long, so we've got a reason to do that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and go back around here. There's also, and I don't know how much you can see it on the camera, an excessive amount of depth, okay? So I'm not too much concerned about rocks and pebbles that I'm stepping on. The wall is up so high that there's, there's enough concavity there that we're not gonna have a whole bunch of sole tenderness. This is a very good example of how it's waxy right here, but right along this edge, chalk. Hopefully you guys can see that, chalk. There's an actual layer there. As soon as I go to trim that out, the chalk goes from here to here. Where it was waxy before, chalk. So you're connecting the dots from one side, I've hit wax here, to the other. So you can see I've taken the time to work this through. I've improved my bars. There's still a bit here, but there's, there's still height here and it's a little bit hard to get. I may come back and do that again. But if I draw in where my bars come down, and I stop and I take and I start to draw the edge of my sole. It becomes very apparent how much of the wall is distorted. Look at all of this. But once you get to the waxy material, the foot becomes more symmetrical from inside to outside. This is one of those feet where I'm gonna leave a little bit of height, but I'm gonna take, I'm gonna nip or half of it off right away. <clears throat> so in our protocol, originally it talks about starting behind the pillars. Okay, with our nipper cut going through the quarters and coming up in the heel a little bit. Because I've got a trim line here, I'm just gonna take half of this wall to start with. That changes that half of the foot quite significantly and gets us very close to the zero position. If I do this on this side and start here, What we're gonna find out quite quickly is if I take the front half of the foot out, the back half starts to become much more symmetrical. I'm gonna go ahead and leave some height there and continue my cut around the foot. There's still quite a bit of height from the sole to the wall. I'm actually going to, because this is a rough trim and a rough cut, I'm gonna to explain to my examiner, look, I know that this is all rough and that I should go ahead and start rasping and finishing this. I'm gonna help my uniform wall thickness because I can see that this is all distorted and it helps my eye start to see the symmetry of the foot and where I need to go. Now, I've still got height here, lots of wall height. At this particular stage, I'm gonna finish mapping this out before I do a final trim. Bars, one inch back, where the bars terminate, widest part of the sole. Uh. Line here, line here, halfway in between those two, there. That one actually shows me it's right there. It 
inch and three quarters, tip of the bone, where we would like to have the break over is here. Even if I don't trim anything else after that rough cut, you'll be able to see that I've increased this here quite significantly because the heel used to end right there. Remember I put that mark right there? That's where the heels used to be. We've increased it by three quarters of an inch, maybe a full inch. Okay, the heels are almost at a zero position. When I go like that, I'm gonna be able to roll this wall, still leave myself some height, and get to a 50-50 position. I'm gonna draw in my pillars. So I've got my pillars drawn in here. I want to make sure that I don't get my rasp into that too much. But I'm going to start the roll of my toe. on my uniform wall thickness from down here because I can see it really easily. <laughs> from the heels to the widest part of the foot, from the widest part of the foot to the breakover, I'm at 50-50. I have improved my wall thickness. I've improved the symmetry of this whole foot. And I still have quite a significant amount of height and depth of the wall above the sole. We're going to flip it over and dress it. You can see just by trimming the bottom how much more symmetrical that foot is. And all we did was took off that excess and got uniform wall thickness. But we have a guide now down here of how much of this we can take off because we don't wanna go straight from here down because you're gonna take too much of the integrity of the wall away. And we have to remember, if we take it from here, we should leave some here. Or if we take it all from here, we should leave some here. You can now see how much more symmetrical the foot has become. You can see that we still have uniform wall thickness. And even though it's asymmetric and that the lateral side is a little bit wider, it is nowhere near out of balance and distorted as it was to begin with. And if we take it and we set it up here, where we started with, that is a completely different foot with a minimization of the amount of flare, toe flare, that happened on that medial side. And again, every single one of these feet, the one thing that's in common is that we're just trimming the distortion away. Our barefoot trim is something that has been extremely difficult and hard for people to understand because there's so many different variations of feet. 
What we're trying to teach and what we hope people start to understand is that by understanding and recognizing the distortions and being able to grade the distortions and then being able to trim the greatest distortion first, we are able to go through a series of foot no matter what the pathology is, no matter what the distortion is, we're able to just trim what is overgrown. And what ends up happening and what it ends up leaving us is a foot that is quite balanced. And we're balancing it to the bone, not necessarily to the limb. But we do know that we can get much closer by balancing the foot to the bone using the sole plane, the widest part of the foot, understanding where the tip of our bone is, and how the heels and the back half of the foot grow and distort. So hopefully this is helpful and gives you a leg up and a, and a head start so when you come and visit us, we're just going to fine tune things. Thank you.